The year 1777 was one in which the passions roused by the breaking off of the American colonies from England boiled up to shooting point. The shooting being idealized in England as the suppression of rebellion. And in the colonies as the defense of liberty. I am General Burgoyne. My more intimate friends call me Gentlemanly Jonas. I'm about to join forces with General Howe in Albany. General Burgoyne and his army had only to pass through the forest. Like all civilized, disciplined, and well-trained troops, however, their military thinking was no match for that of an uncivilized, indisciplined, and undrilled enemy. And it hadn't occurred to them that the axe, on occasion, could be mightier than the sword. This is the fourth obstruction in as many miles. At this rate, we should be lucky to reach Albany by Christmas. You and your men, sir, are charged with protection of the column. Picked troops against a few colonial ruffians, and what is the outcome? Trees felled in our path every night, snipers in the daytime. Don't take too much heart, Captain Anderson. You've only won a skirmish. You may occupy towns and win battles, General, but you cannot conquer a nation. We shall see. General House still in New York. How could he have disobeyed orders? He received no orders, sir. Some gentleman in London forgot to dispatch them. He was leaving town for his holiday, I understand. So to avoid upsetting his arrangements, England will lose her American colonies. In a few days, you and I will be at Saratoga with 5,000 men to face 18,000 rebels in an impregnable position. I can't believe it! Your friend, the British soldier, can stand up to anything, except the British war office. General Burgoyne surrendered three weeks later. The reasons for his defeat are now a matter of history.